Can y'all hear me? There we go. Good morning, everybody. We want to welcome everyone that's here. Welcome any of our first-time guests. Welcome everybody that's with us online and on the radio. I guess everybody got a rain. Maybe we all got a big rain. What, what a blessing. Now we're going to get some cold weather. I, I'm not exactly ready for that myself. I hate to tell that green grass goodbye. But anyway, that's where we are, and it's that time of year. The main thing is, you know, we're all here together this morning in God's house as a church family, and I hope everyone here is really anxious to see what he's got for us, for us this morning. God bless y'all. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood atoning And I repented of my sin And won the victory Victory and Jesus
stretches to the sky. Good to see everybody this morning on this brisk morning. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Hold up. If you're a first-time guest, we'd sure like to welcome you. Please come back and see us. Our weekly activities on Monday, our grief share group meets here at 6 p.m. Our women's Bible study groups meet here at 1 p.m. and again at 6.30 p.m. And that's also on Mondays. On Wednesdays, adult Bible study, Cal Kids and Youth meet here at 6.30. Meals are provided for the children and the youth. Thursdays, team rope and practice are still going, um, 7 to 9 p.m., just $10, $10 a person, and I'm sure that'll be weather permitting. We're going to have a leadership team meeting today after church, so if you're part of that, be sure and stick around. Our... Dance class set for this coming Tuesday has been rescheduled till next Tuesday, November 7th at 6 p.m. This one will be line dancing, and the cost is $5 a person to cover the cost of the instructor. Women's gun safety class, we're going to have that coming up this Saturday, November 4th, from 2 to 6 p.m. See Marie... 
Marie Walker for more information. Our play day that was supposed to happen yesterday has been rescheduled, and that's going to be next Saturday, November 4th. Books open at 9 and get started at 9.30. Our Buckles and Bobbles Youth Rodeo that was scheduled for today has been postponed. We will get, um, get everybody updated when we get a, a for sure date uh, scheduled for that. Double in Thanksgiving lunch, Sunday, November 19th, right after the service. The church will provide meat and drinks. Please bring your favorite side dish, veggies, salads, breads, or desserts to share. We are looking for some cooks that want to help out. There's a sign-up sheet on the back table for anyone that can help cook and prepare the turkeys, hams, or dressings for our Thanksgiving lunch coming up on the 19th. As always, the church will purchase the turkeys and hams, but we do need volunteers to help get all that cooked. So if you want to help, be sure and get signed up. Our next 22 bench rest shooting competition is going to be Saturday, November 11th, starting at 7.30 a.m. Contact RC or a member of the shooting team for a time slot. Our Wednesday night preteens and youth that's grades 4th through 12th. Um, we'll be going to The Promise over in Glen Rose, and that is this Friday, November the 3rd. If your kids can go, please sign up on the back table. We do need a head count for tickets and pricing. This is also open to any adults that would like to go. I'm pretty sure today is the last day to get signed up for that. So please, if you're interested in going, please get signed up. At this time, we'll um, dismiss the kids, the children's church, and everybody else. You've got 60 seconds. If, you, if everyone to make their way back to their seats, I'll go ahead and pray us out. We'll get back to the, to the service. Ever Father, I just, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for the, just the day that you've blessed us with, Lord, and may we, we make the most out of it, Lord. And I just ask that you be with our, our service this morning, Lord. May everything we do bless you, and may we just learn more about you, Lord, and just how to go through this struggle of a life lord day by day and and keep you in the center of it all and and walk down that narrow path lord that, that you're uh, so gracious to lead us down we thank you for the rain that you sent lord we thank you for the the full tanks lord the just the mud on the ground lord the the nourishment of the land we thank you for all your blessing of that lord and we ask that you send us more if you're willing to do that lord just ask you, forgive us where we fail you. Just continue to walk through us daily, Lord. Ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Still you give yourself away 
one more time. We, let's do that chorus one more time. I want you to really look at those words. <laughs> Whoo, it's powerful. Amen? Amen. Who are we that he does everything for each and every one of us? Grace. He loves us no matter where we've been or what we've done. Jimmy says it all the time. 
Some of us probably had a temper tantrum on the way over here this morning. You know what? God loves you. His grace is sufficient. Amen? All right, do that again, please. Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. Today and gone tomorrow, the wave tossed in the ocean, the vapor in the wind, still you hear me when I'm calling, Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am, I am yours. Pray with me. Lord, we come to you right now. We, we just ask that you would open our minds, open our hearts to receive a word from you today. Not Jimmy's words, but you just use him as a vessel to bring it home. Give us a word, Lord. Thank you again for the rain. We ask everything in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you, buddy. Thank you all. Thank you all. Good morning. Man, we had some people people sleeping in this morning uh, because it's a little bit cold. Isn't it nice outside? Come on. Come on, all you people that like that hot weather. It's payback time, all right? It's payback time now. I'll tell you what. Miss Christie, did you put that in my chair? This has got to be the greatest invention since sliced bread, all right? Uh, I don't know if y'all, man, they, they make spam singles now. How cool is that? You know, spam on the go. Yeah, oh, my gosh, man, that is. I got lunch today, all right? Got lunch today. Thank you. Huh? Man, that's, that's, that's about as good as a can of Vienna sausage underneath the seat of your pickup, man. That's pretty good stuff, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. Man, that's good. Um, a couple, of, a couple, of other, a couple of other announcements here, really, really quick, guys. There's a lot of stuff going on. All right, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff. If you can't find something to do, something to get involved with, uh, man, something's wrong with you. Uh, either that, or you just you don't want to do nothing. I don't know. Uh, but uh, with it, we, we are this Wednesday. There is going to be a bonfire out here. Okay, uh, the school's going to have a have a bonfire on Wednesday. Um, I told people on Wednesday night, if you're out here, parents, if you're bringing your kids out here, if you're coming out, uh, man, park, park, park up to the building and maybe down yonder way a little bit. Um, let's leave the, the backside open over here because they are going to bring some buses in. Uh, and we want to make sure that, uh, man, they're able to get in there and get in there okay and safely and all that good stuff without running over your car or something, all right? Um, and the other thing, this is exciting. This is very, very, very exciting. Uh, on February the 19th, uh, it's going to be a busy, busy day, okay, uh, because we are going to have our Thanksgiving lunch here that particular day, but we've got something very, very, very special, um, and I hope, I hope y'all know about this. If you don't, <laughs> did I say February? Oh. Golly, I almost made it through the year without making a mistake, man. Jeez. November, you were looking at me like, what do I, you know, yeah, November 19th, gee whiz, man. Y'all want to come up and we can start over? All right. November 19th, November 19th, we are, we may eat February 19th too, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that's a Sunday or not, but November the 19th, we are going to have our Thanksgiving lunch here, uh, but that afternoon, that evening uh, at 4 o'clock, it's a very, very special, uh, very, very special time for this church. All right, uh, we are going to be ordaining uh, Mr. Remington Talley, okay? Uh, that is a very, very, if you've never been to one of those services, guys, it's a special time, okay? Um, and, and as his church family, uh, you, you, we've got some guys coming in. Uh, we've got other pastors that are going to be coming in and, and uh, uh, taking part in that service as well. Uh, it's a very special time for him and Josie. Uh, it's, it's an opportunity for the church to validate, uh, verify, uh, 
as well as join alongside them uh, for the man for the ministry of where God is calling him. Uh, so uh, make plans, make plans. Uh, the Cowboys will be done, and oh, they, they'll be done by the end. Uh, but what, whatever, they'll lose that day or whatever, so you ain't got to get home to see that. Uh, but November 19th um, at 4 o'clock, we're going to have that ordination service right here. Uh, it be a very special day, so you want to you be a part of it, um, and you're going to want to be here and uh, to support them as, uh, uh, man, as we, uh, as, as we come alongside them uh, to what God's calling them to do. Okay, so, so please get that on your calendars as well. All right, here we go. Everybody ready? If you're ready, let me hear you say you're ready. Ready. All right, good deal. Uh, We're going to continue on today. Uh, We're going to continue on with a series that we started a couple of weeks ago, uh, the series entitled Even You. Uh, now, if you, ha- if, you, if you haven't, if you didn't hear any of the other ones, uh, where we started with this, uh, we, we spent two weeks focusing on the Apostle Paul, all right? Um, and, and guys, where we started there, we took off with Paul. We took off with, with where he was at from the standpoint of when we were introdu- introduced to him as Saul. Uh, we kind of walked through his life a little bit there, uh, looking at uh, uh, when, when God got a hold of him and God saved him, when Jesus saved him, when Jesus spoke to him um, and his life was was changed uh man drastically last week we focused on the fact that that uh uh you know that that when god called him when god chose him uh and chose him to chose paul to be the one that he was sending out to the gentiles um the 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 reality of it was that god could have chosen anybody remember he could have chosen any of the disciples. He could have chosen Matthew. He could have he could have he could have selected Peter. Um, he could have man. He could have you know Mark. Any of those guys. God could have chose any of those guys that had walked with Jesus. But he didn't do that. He chose Paul to do that. All right. And and so that's where we kind of wrapped up with that. Now today. Now now here here's the reality of this. We could spend. We could literally spend the rest of the year looking at this and looking at different individuals that are in the Bible uh, that we would view, that our world today would view as being the, the most least likely individual for God to use. And that's kind of been the emphasis, if you would, uh, with this entire series. You know, we guys, we could we could look at Moses. You know, we know we know the story of Moses. You know, Moses is actually, you know, he made, he's classified as a murderer, you know, because he killed a guy. Um, he was a guy that, that that had a hard time speaking, that had a hard hard time I'm talking but look what God did with him we could we could look at King David you know and and all the shortcomings that King David had but yet but yet God's word still says that David was a man after God's own heart you know uh, we, we man we could look at Esther uh, we could look at uh, we could look at Elijah you know we could look at Elijah for the simple fact that that Elijah um, allowed the fear uh, he allowed fear to creep in and he ran when 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 he thought he was fixing to be when he thought he was be, fixing to be a uh, man killed uh, we could look at all these different guys that, man, that we know and that we know pretty intimately from the standpoint because there's a lot of information out there on them, all right? Today's going to be a little bit different. Today, we're going to look at a lady. Uh, we're going to look at a lady that I guarantee you, every one of us in here, uh, we, we, man, we, we, we know her story. Uh, we, know, we know what she went through. We know what she did. Uh, but, but the reality of it is, the reality of this is, so many times... We miss the impact of what God did with her, okay? Um, and, and guys, that's going to be the key. Uh, that's going to be the key thing that we need to focus on as we go through this today. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this right now. Uh, we're going to wrap this up next week. And, and next week, uh, we're going we're gonna to really blow your mind because next week, we're going to look at an animal that God used, all right? And one of the most least likely animals, we're going to look at a donkey next week, all right? And we're going to see how God used that donkey. And, and I'm just going to tell you, if after next week, if you still think God can't use you, all right? If you still believe that God, that, they're, that, that, that you're beyond him using you, I, I, I'm just going to be, I, I, I have no idea what else I would need to say to you. All right, I'm just going to be honest with you there. So, so guys, as we get into this and as we look at this, now here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, you guys, uh, when, when I say this, you guys are going to know who this is. You see, we know her as, uh, as, as the Samaritan woman, or we know her as the woman 
woman at the well, all right? And now, now with this, we find this account and we find the story of her in John chapter 4. John records this, um, and John records it in a very beautiful way. Now, now, now here, I, you know, I, I, wish, I wish I could read all 40, 42 verses to you, uh, but for time's sake, guys, I, I just, I just want to kind of paraphrase a little bit of what is taking place and, and of how this encounter, uh, how this encounter comes about. When we get into John chapter 4 and we start reading what's taking place here, uh, you know, we see where Jesus, Jesus is making his way back to Galilee, if you would. Now, now with that, if you go into John chapter 3 and read the first couple of verses of John chapter 4, you know, a lot of people might want to try to tell you that Jesus had been forced out. Uh, that the Pharisees were coming after him, and so so he decided that it was time for him to run. And guys, that, that's that's not the case. That that is not the case at all. You know, the reason that Jesus is is on his way back to Galilee. Um, here's the truth of it. He has a divine appointment in Samaria at Jacob's well. All right, everybody with me there? He has a divine appointment with one specific person that, 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 that he is scheduled to meet with there at Jacob's well. And so that's why he's going this way. Now, when you read the text and when you read this account, you're going to see that it was around noontime. All right, it was, around, it was around 12 o'clock in the middle of the day, if you would, around lunchtime when they, make it, uh, when they make it in there and they come upon Jacob's well. Now, here's the thing. They've been walking all day, all right? They've been walking out there, man. It, it, it's hot. It's, it's dusty. He's sweaty. He's tired. Uh, he's thirsty and, and all this. And, and, and they get there, and there's that well. Now, once again, he's got a divine appointment, and he walks over to the well, and he takes a seat, and he sits down all right and, and and we don't know we don't know where the disciples went there's no they they don't you know john doesn't really give us doesn't really tell us what what all took place right there uh but uh and and when we get to this point uh in the text here is where here's where it gets really really interesting for us all right because john's going to record that this samaritan woman comes up to the well once again it's noontime now, folks, that tells us that tells us a lot about her. That tells us a lot about what was going on there. All right, because as she comes up to that well at noontime, Jesus turns to her. He turns to her and he simply asks her as she's pulling the water up. He simply asks her, "Hey, can I have a drink? Can I have a drink?" Now, if you go and read this, you're going to read and you're going to see that it's going to tell. Uh, she's going to tell him, or she's going to make the statement, or it's going to be said about her that she was shocked. She was shocked that Jesus was, was speaking to her. Now, the reason for that, and this is important that we know this, the reason for that, she knew that Jesus was a Jew, all right? Now, guys, we need to understand that, the, the, the number one, Jewish men did not talk to a Samaritan woman. That's a major no-no. That, that was not supposed to take place. Number two, the other aspect of this is the Jews, and, and you know, the, the, the Jews viewed the Samaritans as being less than them. The, the man, the, the Samaritans were, man, they, they, they were, man, they were, they, they were, they, they, they came from uh, when the Assyrians had conquered Israel, had conquered the Jews, when the Jews got dispersed, uh, the, the Samaritans were offsprings from some of those unions that took place, all right? And, and so they, they, man, they were segregated. There was, you can go into, you can go into different Old Testament books, whether in, uh, I believe it's in First Kings, uh, or excuse me, Second Kings, and you go into Ezra, and you can read about all these laws and these policies that, that they developed to, man, to keep these people separate. I mean, it, 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 was, it was absolutely nuts, and man, it, it, it was crazy. But you can look at that if you want a little more information, all right? So now here's where we're going to jump into our text if you got your bible john chapter 4 go down to verse 10 is where we're going to start and i'm going to read quite a bit of this to you i'm going to read all the way through verse 30 if you don't have your bibles it's going to be uh man it's going to be coming across the screens you guys at home uh it'll be coming across your device that you're on that you're watching on now check this out john chapter 4 beginning in verse 10 he says this jesus replied if you only knew the gift god has for you and who you are speaking to you would ask me, and I would give you living water. But, sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoy? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. 
It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount, uh, Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worship? Jesus replied, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him. For salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, check this out, I am the Messiah. Just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman. But none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want, what do you want with her or why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. Y'all pray with me, please. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for, uh, man, for the many, many blessings you have given each and every one of us. Father, we thank you and we do praise you for that wonderful moisture that is, Lord, that you have just, man, Lord, that you have poured down upon us. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, I pray very specifically here right now. Father, I pray that the words that come out of my mouth, Father, that it's not my words, that it's not my ideas, that it's not my thoughts, but Father, that it is, Lord, it is your message. Lord, it is your words. Lord, it is your hope. And Father, I pray, Lord, that the ears, Lord, the hearts that need to hear this, Father, I pray that they're prepared. Father, those that maybe, God, that they, 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 they still have doubts, that they can be used. Father, I pray, God, that they, that they hear from you this morning, Lord, and that they leave here knowing, God, that you have a purpose and that you have a plan for them. Father, I pray, Lord, if there's someone here that doesn't know you, God, I pray before they walk out those doors, Lord, that they'll find that relationship with you. Father, we pray for it. Lord, we pray for your safety here today. And, Father, we pray that everything that we do brings you honor and glory. Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen. Now, guys, I know, I, I know, I know that is a lot to read. I know that is a lot to take in. Uh, but there is so much that we need to take from this. There is so much that we need to grasp from what, man, from what God and from what Jesus is trying to tell each and every one of us here. You know, we need to see that the message that, that, that he is sharing with this woman, we need to see that, uh, you know, that, that, that not, only, not only do we need to see the message that, that, that he's telling her, guys, we need to see her response. Because knowing, knowing, uh, man, knowing where her salvation, knowing, knowing where her salvation is at, guys, the key to seeing that is knowing what her response to this whole thing is. Now, here's an individual. Now, let's be, we're going to be authentic with this, okay? Here's an individual that had a reputation. She had a reputation within the community, uh, within with where she lived. We're not going to deny that. The reality of it was, more than likely, even within her own community, she wasn't looked, she wasn't looked upon very favorably. Did I say that right? Favorably. Man, I can't talk this morning. I don't know what it is. Uh, Y'all understand what I'm saying there? Okay? Nobody, when they looked at her, they were probably, there was probably a lot of whispers that went on. And you say, well, man, how do you know that? Well, because she went to the, when she went to the well, she went around noontime. Now, now what's the key to that? Well, the key to that is she went when nobody else was there. All right? You understand that? Because most of the time, uh, you know, and, and, you know, she, she would, the other people would go uh, when it was a little cooler. These things were heavy. This was a load that, that, that they were having to carry with that water. When she went, she went not expecting to see anybody. All right? Guys, there's a reason for that. Because she didn't want to hear the snide remarks. She didn't want to hear the comments. She didn't want to hear what people were saying about her. She didn't want to see people rolling their eyes or, what, or whatever it may be. Now, here, here's where this gets me. Here's where this really, really gets me. And, and, and some of you know, we can, we can agree, we can disagree on this. But guys, I do believe that this was a woman 
This was a woman that so many times in the church in America today, this is a woman that the church in America, will, nine times out of ten, a lot of churches are going are, are, to are, are going to reject her. You understand what I'm saying there? And, and a lot of people say, oh, man, I don't know a church that would do that. But, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, I, know, I, I could name you ten, ten churches that would. All right, we can never be that church. We can never be a group of people. If you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself, uh, if you call yourself that you're striving to be Christ-like, then guys, we, what we've got to understand, these are the very people, the very people that God has called us to reach. You understand that? All right, and, and, and so with that, when we come to this text, when we come to this exchange of what is taking place, Jesus was very direct with her and i hope you caught that if you didn't catch that i want to encourage you to go back and read it he was very very direct with this young lady as far as what was going on in her life with what she was dealing with now a lot of times a lot of times and 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 i guarantee you the, the majority of you in here the majority of us we hang up on the fact that it said she had been married five times. We hang up on that. You know, it's like that. It's like, you know, we, we, we see that, and, 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 and that's the thing that stands out to us. Guys, the reality of it is when you, if you go and you look at the Greek, all right, and, and this could be a good theological debate. When you go and look at the Greek, the Greek word for husband and the Greek word for man is exactly the same. So whether or not she had been married five times or whether or not she had just she had cohabitated with five different individuals, guys, that, that part of it is irrelevant. All right, what's relevant with the fact, what's relevant with the text is the fact that she did not deny what was going on in her life. Everybody see that? Because when you go back, when he asked her that question, uh, when he tells her, go and tell your husband, she could have said, she could have said, okay, all right, I'll go tell him right now. She could have said that, but she didn't. What did she say? When we go back to verse 27, she says, I don't have a husband. And the woman replied, and Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband. You see, guys, she didn't try to lie. She didn't try to hide it. She didn't try to just, you know, uh, man, wipe it off and say, hey, man, you know, it, 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 it's no big deal. What she did was she spoke the truth. And when she spoke the truth, she received what Jesus was offering her. All right, so check this out. Check this out. You know, the disciples come back. We need to see her response. The disciples come back, and, and you know, we've got a little bit on that, but that's not our focus this morning. Our focus is on these last three verses here in John 4, 28 through 30. Check this out. In verse 28, the woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone come and see a man who told me everything i ever did could he possibly be the messiah so the people came streaming from the village to see him guys did, did, did everybody see that she didn't she didn't slump away did she she didn't just like put her head down and go to walking away and going oh my gosh poor me there is absolutely no she didn't do that did she what did she do what does the text what does the text tell us that she did come on say it she did what she ran back to the village did, guys do you catch that did, i mean does i want to ask you something all right you every one of us in here everybody watching we've got that exact same good news y'all hear what i'm saying We've got that, ex that exact same good news that she had just received. She ran back to that village. I'm going to ask you something right now. When's the last time you ran to somebody to tell them about the saving grace of Jesus Christ? When's the last time you ran to a family member that you know does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. When's the last time you made that special trip to go and see him and say, hey, man, I have, I have got to share this good news with you? When's the last time you did that? You see, the reality of it is, and I guarantee you, and I'll put my hand up first, the reality of it is, ain't none of us done that, have we? Ain't none of us took off running with that good news that we have. And, guys, I, 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 I'm the first one to put my hand up. I'm the first one to raise my hand and say, Lord, forgive me because I have failed in that so many times. She took, she took what he told her. She took what he gave her. And she had so much excitement about it. She had so much conviction about it that she ran back to her community. They call it, you know, it's, it's called a village there in the Bible. You know, guys, we got to lose. She, she ran back to town. 
she ran downtown where everybody was at and she began to shout at the top of her lungs trying to reach any and everybody that she could calling out to them you need to come and see this guy and and notice notice what she says there you know in verse 29 she says come and see a man who told me everything I ever did could he possibly be the Messiah you all right now now guys I'm gonna tell you right now all right and I know some of y'all are like me I know some of y'all are like me if if we were to take if we were to take everything you did and start broadcasting them on these monitors they, mo most of us would probably put our heads down and get out of here pretty quick wouldn't we I, I mean I know I would all right she didn't she didn't she you know she was excited he didn't shun her he didn't put her down he didn't condemn her he didn't beat her down he didn't look at her and say no you're not worth it you're not worthy you are a sorry piece of trash and on and on and on and on and on he didn't do that guys he shared his love with her he shared his hope with her and she received that and she ran back to her town to her community to her people to tell them and to share with them the hope that she had just received Whoo, man i tell you what this is an amazing account of god using of god using this woman of God using this woman that had made some poor decisions, that had made some poor choices, that her own community shunned her, that her own people looked down upon her, that, that, that people on the outside would label her and call her all sorts of things. God, Jesus chose her on that divine appointment to do something amazing. And guys, here's the thing. This gets better. So, well, man, how can this get, get better? Well, jump on down to verse 39. In John chapter 4, verse 39 through 42, it says this. Now, here's the impact. Here's the impact that this woman had. Verse 39. Many. Everybody say many. many. What does many mean? It means a lot, doesn't it? I'm not talking about many. I'm talking about many. Is that right? A bunch. Many Samaritans from the village, now listen to this, believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I did. Folks, what would have happened if she hadn't ran back to the village? What would have happened if she hadn't ran back and told those people? What if she would have just picked up her water jug and just walked off? What if she would have, what if she would have said, oh man, I'm, I can't do this. I'm not going to go in there and put my life on display. I'm not going to go in there and start shouting this out from the top of my lungs. What would have happened? Well, guys, I'm going to tell you what would have happened. All right, without a doubt in my mind, there would have been many people in that village who would have never heard about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And because of that, they would have been burning in hell today. You understand what I'm saying? Folks, we've got to understand. We've got to understand each and every one of us. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you've got a divine appointment with your creator today. You've got a divine appointment with him, and he has given you a message. He has given you, he has given you something so powerful. But so many times in, in the church in America today, man, we're just so used to getting in our routines. We're just so used to doing just the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Check this box off. Check this box off. Check this box off. Well, I did this. I did this. Guys, when's the last time you went and shared Jesus Christ with somebody? When's the last time? Well, preacher, I'm not, I, man, I'm, I, I can't do that. I'm not worthy of doing that. Folks, we have spent the last three weeks, the last three weeks going over two individuals here now that were the most least likeliest individuals to ever be able to share what Jesus Christ has done. You say, well, man, you know, preacher, man, I, I still mess up and I cuss some. You know, man, preacher, I mess up, man, I, I, I still have a beer every once in a while. Or, man, I, 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 I enjoy wine or, you know, or, or, or we, we, we could go on and on and on and on with all this different stuff. And what I'm going to tell you is, so what? So what? Guys, if you think Jesus is not more powerful to overcome any of those things, then, 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 then I don't know what you're doing here. Because the reality of it is, he will take everything in your life. He will take all the bad that we've ever been involved in. He'll take all the negative stuff that we allow ourselves to get sucked into. He will take all the rumors. He'll take, he'll take, I don't care how bad your reputation is. I don't care how good your reputation is. Because my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one that spread his arms and died on that cross. Guys, he did that. He did that specifically so that you could have hope. But not only so that you would have hope, but so that you could go out there and run to that next community and tell them about what Jesus Jesus has done for you folks why aren't we doing that why aren't we doing that well I'm not good enough well let me tell you something you're never gonna be good enough but you're gonna be worthy enough because you were worthy enough for him to die for you that's what we need to focus on that's where we need to be you know this lady many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman's that said he told me everything I ever did look at their response in verse 40 when they came out to see him 
they begged him to stay in their village, so he stayed for two days. For two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the Savior of the world. You know, we can look at Paul. Paul, you know, because of the change that took place in Paul, it had major implications upon the church. All right, we, man, we're still looking at everything that Paul did today. You know, by the grace of God, you know, Paul gave, gave us, man, the, the biggest chunk of the New Testament. Paul started countless churches. Man, Paul discipled many young believers. Paul, man, Paul, Paul, Paul trained many preachers. Paul suffered for Christ. You know, we know so much about him, but guys, here's the thing with that. This Samaritan woman, this Samaritan woman, I want you to understand this, and I want you to get this right now. Guys, she was just as important as the Apostle Paul. She was just as important as Moses. She was just as important as Matthew. She was just as important as Peter. And folks, she is just as important as you. And if Jesus could do that with her, if he could do that with her, think for just one second what he could do with you. Think for just one minute what he, could, what he, could, what, what he would be willing to do with your life. You see, he could have, when he got there, he could have skipped the well. Now, 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 now hear, hear me when I say this. He could have skipped the well. He could have skipped the well. He could have bypassed it, and he could have. It's getting hot up there. i got to come down here, Ronnie. Sorry. Um, he could have skipped that, and he could have went on into town. He could have went on into town, and he could have found, found this guy right here that, man, he, he the, 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 you know, and I'm, pick, I'm picking on him because he's such a good kid. All right? Uh, you know, he, he could have he found the good person in town. He could have found the religious leaders. He could have found the people who knew the word, who were living the word, who were living their lives in, in, in the way that the Bible told them that they need to live their lives. You know, Jesus could have went in and found that person. You, you understand that, don't you? You understand that? He could have done that, but he didn't. He didn't. He chose to use a woman who had a reputation. He chose to use a woman that, you know, he, be honest with it. He chose to use a woman that was living in sin. And guys, he took her sin away from her. And because of that freedom that she received when Jesus took that sin away, because of that grace that she received when she was forgiven for what was going on with her life, she ran back to that village. She ran back to her community. She ran back to her family. She ran back to her people and shared that hope with them. Not in shame, not in guilt, not, not ever doubting who he was. Could he be the Messiah? Folks, if Jesus can use her to change her community, I'm going to tell you right now, he can use you to change our community. Not only that, he can use you to change our country. He can use you to change our world. Well, who am I, man? I just live here in little old Dublin, Texas. You know, or I just live over here in little old DeLeon, Texas. Or I just live over here in little old, little old Heiko, Texas. Or, man, I just live over here in little old Hamilton, Texas. Or I, I live out in Bunyan. Or I live in Lingleville. Or I live in Huckabee. You know, or I live in Stephenville. You know, how, how's, I'm going to tell you something, man. It don't matter where you've been, but it matters where you're going. Are you focused on yesterday? Or are you like Paul in forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead? The Samaritan woman reached ahead. And because she was willing to reach ahead, Many, many lives were changed. Don't believe the lie that Satan tells you that you cannot be used. Here I go like a broken record. Or that you've done too many bad things. Because, guys, you're never too far from the grace of God. Church, you understand that? Christian, you understand that? Jimmy, do you understand that? You're never too far from the grace of God. In order to change the world, in order to change the world, in order to change your family, you've got to start right now so my question for you today is are you ready to start you guys come on back up and we're going to close this up right here we're going to wrap this up right here if you don't know my jesus if you still believe if you still believe that you've done too many bad things to experience his grace <laughs> gosh she is the perfect example that you're never too far from his grace you guys stand with me and let's pray Father, I thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for your word. And Father, I, Lord, I, man, I pray that your word does not fall upon deaf ears. 
Father, I pray, Lord, that, 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 Lord, that we don't... Uh, Lord, we don't, we don't read that word, and we, Lord, we, I don't, don't let the enemy start putting thoughts into our mind and tell us, well, that's one thing that that's about her, but, but he doesn't know me. Father, I mean, just, Lord, I pray you keep that stuff from us because, Father, you know each and every one of us intimately. Lord, you know us better than we know ourselves. God, you know our strengths. And Father, you also know our weaknesses. And so, Father, I just, man, I pray right now, Lord, if there is somebody struggling, Lord, with that lie, Lord, with that notion that, man, that they're, they're too far gone, that they've done too many bad things. Father, I pray you just, Lord, you just get that thought out of there. And, Lord, that they just feel the presence of your Holy Spirit. Lord, that they feel the presence of the grace that, that Jesus, that you want to give them. And, Father, I pray you give them the courage to call out to you. Father, we love you. We praise you. Jesus, we ask all this in your most precious and holy name. If you don't know Jesus and if you want to accept him into your heart, if you want more information about that, I encourage you to find one of our elders, find one of our lay pastors, come find me. And, guys, we'll be more than happy to walk you through that. God bless you guys. Thank you hey, all for being here. Don't run off. Stay right there. Tracy, you come up here too, please. Somebody's got something for you here and just say. <laughs> just hang tight. Just hold tight. I'm, you know I'm not patient, Damon. I know, but look. Here they come. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do I need to come down there or are you going to come up here? You want to come up here, don't you? I know it, buddy. What do you got there? Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 y'all just thought y'all were done. Here you go. There you go. I was told to speak up here on this. We just want to say thank you, Jimmy, for all we've done you've done talk to us teach us what we learn right now everything you've done and we're all we all are really we all really love it and we all know you try hard to get here and teach us this and we and this is and this is what i was gonna say thank you jimmy buddy thank you appreciate you buddy appreciate you thank you oh that is that is beautiful thank you thank you thank you very very much oh my gosh <laughs> Look oh, thank you your kids. you're gonna have to hold some of these mama <laughs> thank you thank you very much Ooh, man i got lots of reading to do today look that is fancy thank you oh thank you buddy thank you Cotton, thank you, buddy. Oh, hey, can I have a hug? Can I have a hug? Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Did you make that? Oh, dude, thank you. Where's your sister at? Don't know. She's back there, isn't she? That's all right, man. Uh oh, is it gonna jump at? No, thank you. Spam? Huh? The maps? What? Oh, thank. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh, Lord. Y'all scaring me with that, man. Y'all scaring me. Thank y'all. We appreciate it very, very much. And Let's uh, give Jimmy and Tracy a big hand. They do uh, work really hard. Yeah. Hey, I, you know, I tell you what, man. Uh, those kids, anytime. I, I think I've got every, every card, everything. There's glitter. I can't tell you how much glitter we've got. Uh, from things that the kids have made, uh, we've got them all. It's it's one of those things that uh, uh, it, it's it's always a joy to to get to go back and look at. It. I guarantee you, I've got stuff from John when John was about that big. All right, 
um, and, and to see what he's doing now, uh, man, what an honor and what a privilege to be able to, to serve with y'all. Miss, Miss Bailey, happy birthday to you too, girl. We get, we get to share a birthday. And, uh, man, we appreciate you guys. Thank you all for thinking of us very, very much. Thank you all. God bless you guys.